Text scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. Chapter 4, verses 8 through 9. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are persecuted. We are perplexed, but not despair, not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Let us pray. Dear Father God, we thank you and we praise you for this great and glorious opportunity to come before this, your people. And Lord, as always, we ask you to hide us behind the cross that they will only hear and see you, that you will get the glory, the honor, and the praises out of everything that is said and done here. Father, we know that the devil is busy. We having our technical difficulties and all type of things this morning. But Father, we just put it in your hands. And we know that you can and will make everything all right. Father, bless our time here together. Bless this word to be what you would have for it to be. Speak through us and to us, Father God, that they will hear from you. And we will all be able to be hearers and doers of your word. Father, bless our time here together, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're looking at the subject, I made it. I made it. And like I said before, come on in, say good morning. Let us know that you can hear us. Uh, let us know that you're here with us. We know that um, Facebook sometimes do some weird stuff. But at the end of the day, we thank God that we have a backup and we're able to record. And we thank God for his word, his will, and his way. The statement I made it is a very familiar statement that implies achievements in the midst of overwhelming odds. It is a proclamation of achievement for someone who has had the deck stacked against them. But we all go through things in life. It's a way of saying that in spite of all I've been through, in spite of all I've dealt with in life, and in spite of, of the many stumbling blocks that I've had thrown at me in my way, I have overcome and I have reached my goal. Now we must understand that the statement, I made it, does not refer to an ultimate goal, nor does it refer to a permanent victory. As long as we are on this earth, every achievement is temporary, every victory is short-lived, the celebration only lasts for a while, and in many instances, it is only the prelude to another struggle. What does that mean? We always are going to continually go through things, but because we trust God, God will bring us out. In other words, and this song that I love to hear, it says in this song, it says we are uh, encouraged that each victory will help you and some others to win. So even though the statement I made it is not permanent, it contains an element of encouragement which says to us that the same grace which brought us thus far on our journey can be trusted to lead us all the way home. We must also understand and know that there's a big difference in saying I made it and saying I've got it made. You see, if I've got it made, it is a statement of self-sufficiency and arrogancy, while I made it is a statement of humble jubilation. I've got it made is a statement of overconfidence and cockiness, while I made it is a statement of joy and relief. When a person says I've got it made, he's not going any further. He acknowledges that he is already at the top. And when you're at the top, there's only one way to go from there is down. But we don't want to do that. When a person says, I've got it made, there are no more milestones to them. There are no more achievements. There are no more improvements. There are no more accomplishments. When we say a lot of folks say, I got it made, it's like I, I did it by myself. I came through on my own. Didn't nobody help me. Didn't nobody do nothing for me. I got to where I am on my own. But you got to understand, baby, you didn't get to where you are by yourself. You didn't get to where you are doing it all on your own. Trust me, God was the one that brought you to where you are. God was the one that put you in the place that you're in. God is the one that strategically strategically does the things that he does to make sure that we have everything that we want to have, that we need in life. The Israelites who lived during the days of the prophet Amos felt that because of their strategic location, their economic prosperity, and their military might, they had it made. But their self-sufficient confidence was shattered by these words in Amos chapter 6 verse 1. said, woe to them that are, that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Smyrna. Belshazzar felt that he had it made one day. 
He got so cocky that he took the gold and silver vessels which had been in the temple at Jerusalem and used them for one of his fancy drinking parties. But when the festivities got into high gear, he and his guests were scared almost out of their mind because they seen the hand writing on the wall. The 12th chapter of Luke speaks of the rich fool that thought he had it made when he tore down his small barns, built up larger ones, and stored away all his abundance of grain. He was so confident that he said, So thou hast much goods laid up many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But we all know that shortly after him making that selfish and conceited speech, God said to him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. So we should be careful about saying that we have made it. Nobody has it made until he crosses over Chile Jordan, sets his foot in the promised land. In other words, until we get to heaven, we haven't made it yet. But the statement, I made it, is a celebration of a victory over tough circumstances. Let me give you a few examples of people who are justified in participating in the I made it celebration. When parents, y'all know how we do. We work hard to make sure that our children get the proper education. We make sacrifices. We do all we can. And you understand that feeling when you see that child walk across that stage and graduate and get that diploma in hand. You can look back and look up to the Lord and say, Lord, we made it. When you work hard and you receive that much deserved promotion, when you know in your mind it was nobody but God that gave you the promotion, you can look up to him and say, thank you, Jesus, I made it. Yes, sir. The Hebrew boys, when they came out of the fiery furnace, untouched, unharmed, unseen by the fire, they could look back and say, we made it by the grace of God. Have I got a witness in here? If we look at our text right here, let's look at our text. Paul uses a series of strong words to express his situation. Paul says we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. We are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are cast down, but not destroyed. In other words, despite all the known and imaginable weapons used to stop me, I can still say I made it. Not by my might, not by my strength. Nor by my power, but by the grace of God. Yes, I mean, I am what I am by the grace of God. We have gotten to where we are now because of the Lord. If you look back over your life and you see the things that God brought you through, you see the ups and the downs, the changes and the turnaround. You must understand and know that it was nobody but the Lord that brought you out of all of that. It wasn't you. It wasn't your last name. It wasn't your mama, your daddy, your sister, or your brother. It was the God that we serve and the power that he has in his hand. Have I got a witness in here? I am what I am. You always must say that. I am what I am because of the grace of God. Let's take a brief look at these four negative statements. Trouble, persecuted, perplexed, and cast down. That's a lot to deal with all at one time. Let's look at them. To be troubled means to be harassed, to worry, to feel discomfort. Now, Paul said that he is troubled on every side. No matter where he turned, he suffered harassment. He was harassed by the Jew with whom he had once collaborated with to destroy the Christians. He was harassed by Christians who didn't trust him and felt that his so-called conversion on the road to Damascus was nothing. Yes, he was troubled on every side. No matter where he went, he was made to feel uncomfortable. How many of you have ever felt like this? It seemed like everywhere you look, that's trouble. That's trouble in your home, trouble on your job. Yeah, you even run into trouble at church. You got trouble in your finances, trouble in your body, your trouble in mind. Everywhere you look, that's trouble. But by the grace of God, some way, somehow, you will make it through. Next, he says that he was perplexed, meaning he was confused. He didn't have all the answers, but he knew that he had been handpicked by God to proclaim his eternal message. He knew that he was anointed to warn others of the dangers of sin, yet he could not shake his fleshly desires. He said, when I would do good, 
evil is always present. And then Paul said that he was persecuted. Paul was persecuted verbally as well as physically. He was lied on and talked about. He was criticized and brutalized. He was misused, falsely accused, and physically abused. But God. And the reason I said but God, no matter what you go through, deal with, see, or have to endure, you must understand God is right there with you. He walks through the fire with you. He walks through the flame with you. He walks through the problems with you. He's right there. None of us are exempt from going through trouble. None of us are exempt from being persecuted. Why? Because God, the Lord Jesus Christ, he went through. He was persecuted. He was talked about. They spit on him. They pulled his beard out by the roots. If he went through, that doesn't exempt us from going through. That means we're going to deal with some things too. But the thing that we have in common, the thing that, that blesses us the most, that God is right there with us. And finally, Paul said he has been cast down. He was constantly being knocked down and thrown down into the valley of despair. But this throwing in the flesh kept him from developing the big head. He understood and knew that it's by the grace of God that I made it through each thing that I've been through. I made it through my trials. I made it through my tribulation. I made it through this, that, and the other by the grace of God. Paul was cast down, but despite all of these things, Paul still kept saying, I made it. I am pressed at every point. There are roadblocks at every turn, but some way, somehow, we managed to escape. Every effort was made to keep him down, but by the grace of God, Paul made it out anyway. So we can identify with Paul. We can identify with what he was saying. Yes, we've been troubled on every side. Look around us. We've been dealing with this pandemic. People are sick. Folks are dying. We're going through financial problems. All kinds of things are going on. We can relate to him when he said we are perplexed. We've got to the point there's some days you're so confused, you don't know whether you're coming or going. And certainly we know what it means to be persecuted and to be cast down. The thing is, a lot of folk don't like to deal with you because you're saved. A lot of people don't want to be around you because you know the Lord Jesus Christ. Baby, that's all right. I'm going to keep on serving him. I'm going to keep on doing what he tells me to do. Why? Because in the end, the Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Paul, we can identify with Paul. Certainly because, yes, we've been persecuted. We've been cast down. We travel that same road as Paul. And just like him, we can look back and say, we made it. Yes, by the grace of God, we've made it through. We've had many ups. We've had many downs. We've had many changes and turnarounds. We, we've been almost level to the ground. The mountain seems so steep. But thank God he gave us the strength to climb over it. Sometimes our friends and our family members have turned their back on us. But because of the God that we serve, we're able to press through it. We're able to keep on pushing. We're able to keep on fighting. And we never gave up. Thank you, Jesus, that we made it. Thank you, Jesus, that we made it through the trials. Thank you, Lord, that we made it through the tribulation. Thank you, Lord, that we were like the Hebrew boys. We made it through the fire. Thank you, Lord. We were like Daniel. We made it out of the lion's den. Thank you, Lord, that we made it through all of the trials and the tribulation. We made it through the pitfall. We made it through the sickness. Cancer couldn't take you out. Why? Because you were covered under the blood. How blood pressure can't do you in. Why? Because you're covered under the blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody need to hear that this morning. I don't care what you're dealing with. I don't care what you're facing. The God that we serve has all power in his hand. The God that we serve, he's a mighty God. He's a holy God. He's a powerful God. He's a loving God. That's why I love that song. It says, amazing grace. How sweet the sound. That saved a wretch like me. I, I once was lost. But now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. My favorite verse is that through many dangers, towards and snares, I've already come towards grace that's brought me safe thus far. And that same grace, that same grace will lead me home. Thank you, Lord for making it. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength to endure. Thank you, Lord, that we can look back and say, I made it through this. I made it through that. And no matter what I'm facing right now, because I serve him, 
I'm going to make it through this. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the strength to triumph over the tribulation, to go through the trial. Thank you, Lord, that we made it through the hurt. Thank you, Lord, that we made it through the pain. Thank you, Lord, that we made it through everything that the devil has tried to throw at us. We made it. We were able to overcome. We were able to press through it. When you look back, when God brought you out of that hospital room and brought you through that surgery, you can look back at that hospital and say, thank you, Lord, I made it. You can look back when God delivered you from that situation you were in. You can look back and say, I made it through by the grace of God. Well, in spite of all the technical difficulties, in spite of all that we went through this morning to get to this point, I want you to understand one thing. <laughs> we're at the point where the clock on the wall says that's all. It's been real fun, but Rev McNeil got to run. See you later, alligator. And after a while, crocodile. But I, I believe I, I just go ahead on and preach this thing how I feel it because I can understand and I can relate to what Paul was saying, but I also can tell you, I thank God each and every day that I made it. I thank God each and every day when I open my eyes that I'm able to behold a new day that he's already unraveled in my life. Somebody in this room that's listening to me under the sound of my weak voice, you ought to be able to tell God thank you that he brought you through all you went through. Tell God thank you that he delivered you when you were going through in your mind. Tell God thank you that he delivered those children. The more you pray, God began to work. Tell God thank you that he put everything in your life back together that was all tore up, that was all disarrayed. You can tell God thank you for making a way out of no way. Tell God thank you for healing. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for peace. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the ways that you've made. You can look back over your life and look at all that God has brought you through. And you can say, I made it by the grace of God. I made it because God brought me through. I made it because the blood was covering me. I made it through that accident. Why? Because God kept his angels encamped around me. I made it to this point. I didn't make it by myself. I made it because of the grace of God. Paul said, yeah, we, we're troubled. We're perplexed. We're persecuted and we've been cast down. But because of the grace of God, God picks us up, turns us around, places our feet on a solid ground. It's all because of him. It's not because of me. It's not because of you. It's not because of our last name. It's not because of who we're related to or who we know. It's all because of the grace of God that we've made it thus far. And that same grace is going to lead us home. You all have a blessed day. Keep trusting in him. Keep believing in him. And just know this. God will make a way out of nowhere. All you got to do is believe him. God bless you.